Okay. Hi, guys. Welcome to our Big Seller training tonight. I'm your trainer, Tansy, and I am from Big Seller. And for our training today, we'll mainly focus on the top, uh, on the features about SQL accounting software. Maybe some of you already tried this feature, maybe for your previous business, or maybe right now you want to have a try in our Big Seller for SQL accounting software. And also in the final part, we will have the Q&A part. So if you have any questions, maybe on the SQL feature or some other system features in Big Seller, you want to know, you can initiate your questions in the chat box to let me know. Okay, so let's go to next page. For our SQL accounting system, the software, currently we already support the features like sales invoice, customer payment, and also the purchase synchronization. And maybe some of you are using the SQL accounting for some other like financial settlement, or maybe you are using the SQL for inventory manage. But actually uh, after this training, you can take a knowledge first. Because I think for most of the seller here today, our big seller SQL feature already satisf satisfy your needs. Okay. So let's move to a big seller. I will show you the page of our big seller system first. Wait a second. This one. Okay, so this is our big seller page. If you just register your big seller these days, so after you log in your big seller account, the first one thing you need to do is the authorization. You can go for a setting or go for here, personal center, authorization. Here you can authorize your shop to big seller. But actually for SQL feature, SQL accounting feature in big seller, currently we only support Shopee, Lazada, and TikTok, the integration. And how to authorize your shop, you can go for this page, store authorization. Click this button, add new store to authorize your Shopee, Lazada, TikTok to your big seller shop first. And after the synchronization here at authorization, we can only see the here. We can only see the data for the previous a month. So maybe for some seller, you want to create a sales invoice for your orders maybe last year or maybe a previous earlier time. So you can pass your request to our customer service team. So we can send your account to our tech team, can roll the data for you. So you can create a sales invoice and also some other customer payment slip for the previous orders data. Okay, but need to pay attention. For the first authorization, we can only see the data for the previous one month, for the recent one month for Shopee, Lazada, TikTok orders in here, okay? So go back to our slides. Today, I will tell you how to use Big Seller SQL features. And if you have any requests about some other feature integration about SQL, you can also let me know in the chat box. And here we have four steps today. The first step is to authorize your SQL account to Big Seller system. And after that, you need to do some mapping. You need to map Big Seller information with SQL accounting system. And then after the mapping, you can create a sales invoice. And also for, by the time when you are going to knock off the payment, you need to do the payment reconciliation you can create a customer payment in Big Seller. And here, if you want to synchronize the purchase data from Big Seller to your SQL item, you can also do in Big Seller. And uh, let me open the SQL. And need to pay attention, currently we don't support SQL Cloud. We only support the PC version. And for our first step about authorization, how to authorize your SQL accounting to your big seller. Wait a second. 
I will open the SQL and share screen about this. Share screen, this one. Okay, so this is the SQL accounting software. And currently we only support the PC version. For the cloud version, currently we don't support. You can see here they have desktop and also they have the cloud version. And for the first step here, first step to authorize your SQL to Big Seller. How to do it? Actually very easy. You can go for Big Seller here, setting, authorization center, other, accounting software. Here, if you haven't tried this system, the system feature about SQL here, here will show no data, just like accurate. But I think um, most of the seller will choose accurate are from Indonesia. And for our training today, most of you are from Malaysia. And also SQL is the one of the popular accounting system in Malaysia. And if you want to authorize your SQL account, you can cl click here at company. And this information like company name, username, password are from this page here. Company name, username, and password. And actually, previously, according to some user's feedback, they will ask the maybe the SQL dealer or maybe the SQL customer service or maybe account manager will help you create the account. So basically, for one company here means one marketplace. So if you are running the shops like Shopee, Lazada, TikTok, maybe you will have three accounts. And some of the account manager, they will create one account only and will include all the marketplaces in one account. So you can check your account information according to your actual situation. But commonly, one account would for one marketplace. So one company here means maybe my Shopee, so another company for my Lazada and TikTok. So these three are the basic information and you need to copy them and paste to our big seller here. And for the information here, maybe a bit difficult to find it, database and the DCF path. You can go for SQL login page here, this button setting, okay? And here is to check your SQL account database. Actually here, this one is our DCF path. This is the place that you save the account, the data from your SQL. Here, you need to copy this, and this is the DCF path, the place for you to save the SQL data. And for the database name, because this is created by myself for testing, and this is the official one, official one, this is the database name. And what you need to copy is the information before the doc FDB. So what I need to copy is ACC0001. This part is the database name. So go back to our big seller here. What I need to copy, this one, DCF pass. Copy and paste to my big seller. And this one is the ACC001. This information and for my company name, test company. So this is the information what I need to fill in to finish the authorization and then I need to click submit. So after the authorization will show here, company name, account, database, TCF, DCF path. And what you need to make sure is that the DCF path is the correct one. Otherwise, when you are creating a sales invoice or some other payment slip, will say, will create fault, will create fault. Okay, so need to make sure this information is correct. So this is the first step. To authorize your SQL account to Big Seller System. So you can see here, actually very easy. Just need to copy the basic information and paste to our Big Seller. And second part, for the mapping. 
here. The reason why we need to map the big seller information with SQL is that how we big seller push data to SQL actually just by the mapping. Because every time when we big seller have a completed order from Shopee, Lazada, and TikTok, then will be synchronized to the SQL feature page, uh, feature page. Yes, and then you can create the sales invoice, customer payment, according to the data from big seller completed orders. Then our big seller will push the data to SQL. Because you have already finished the mapping, so when we are creating the sales invoice and synchronized to SQL, the SQL system can identify each information and know, and they will know where they need to put the information to. like. Maybe for the shipping fee from a big seller, where I need to put in my SQL sales invoice. So we need to do the fees mapping. And also for the SKU from my big seller warehouse, we call it merchant SKU. How we display in the SQL sales invoice. So we need to do the mapping. This is the also a very important step. So let's go back to the big seller page and I will show you how to do the mapping and which one is required for each feature. Go back to here, report, SQL account. I need to pay attention is that actually for this feature, the SKU mapping here, we use the big seller merchant SKU, which is the SKU from your big seller warehouse. So if you haven't enabled any merchant SKU in your big seller warehouse, so you cannot use the SQL feature. And for the merchant SKU, in big seller, actually you can imagine just like the product information in your big seller warehouse. So you need to create it. Cause maybe some of the some of the seller in this training, you already use big seller inventory feature, push inventory for a while. So you will know that the merchant SKU is actually the big seller warehouse product information. But if you haven't created, so before you try big seller SQL feature, you need to create the merchant SKU into your big seller warehouse. Okay. If you have any question about the merchant SKU creating, you can raise your question in the chat box. So I can show you how to create a merchant SKU. Or maybe some of you are confused about what is the big seller merchant SKU. You can initiate a question in the chat box. It's okay, we can discuss. Okay, so go back to here. Suppose I already have the big seller product information in my warehouse in big seller merchant SKU. So I can start doing the mapping directly. Mapping SKU, this is the first step. And let me change another network. So we can see the image, okay? So you can see here, we have mapping SKU, store mapping, warehouse mapping, supplier fees mapping and payment method. And if you want to realize all the features, including sales invoice, customer payment, and purchase invoice, you need to finish all the mapping here below. Okay, so for mapping SKU is to map the big seller merchant SKU with your SQL item code. Because in big seller here, the product, we call it merchant SKU in the SQL. We call it item. We we have the different name in Big Seller and the SQL. And here we have a question in the chat box. Actually, it's a very good question. If already have existing SQ in Big Seller, it have to be the same with SQL accounting. Yes, because maybe some of you already try SQL for a time. So in your SQL account, wait a second, let me log in here. So some of you already have the SQL item information in stock, maintain stock item here. Here actually just like our big seller warehouse, right? And in SQL here, all the products, they will call it item, item. So if you already try SQL for maybe long time, you already have some item. So for the first step, mapping SKU, I need to map merchant SKU with my SQL item. So whether the name should be the same, but I can tell you if the name are exactly the same, it will be very easy for you to do the mapping. Cause here, 
let me show you in Big Seller. Because here we have single mapping and also we have bulk mapping. If you do the bulk mapping, so it will be much more quicker because maybe some of you are selling the products like hundreds, thousands. And remember, when you are doing the mapping, you need to install our Big Seller Finance plugin. This is a plugin just like the auto high-speed printing, the auto high-speed plugin. And here I can show you when I click mapping, here will show this error message. Have not opened Big Seller Finance plugin. Please try the following, check again. So now let me enable this one with a second. Big Seller Finance plugin. And I will show you this one, share screen. This one, this is our Big Seller Finance plugin. Every time when you are using the SQL feature in Big Seller, you need to enable, you need to open the finance plugin. So in this plugin, our system will record every time when you are doing the mapping here, we'll show how many SKU or which data you already finished mapping successful. And also every time when you are creating sales invoice, here we'll have the records. So if anytime you have question, you can upload the log. So our system, the tech team can check the issue. Okay, but actually the main reason we need to have this is to record the data, just like the auto high speed printing. So after I already install it, I open it, go back to Big Seller, here, check again. And you can see here, if I do the bulk mapping here, we'll show this message. If there is an SKU with the same name in SQL, so Big Seller will create the mapping relationship directly. But if it doesn't exist, Big Seller will create a new SQL item and create a mapping relationship. So for the question here, for the question from our user here, if I already have an existing SKU in Big Seller, it have to be the same with SQL accounting or not. So you can see here, if I am using the same name, Merchant SKU and SQL item call, Big Seller will create a mapping directly. Otherwise, if they are not the same name, Big Seller will create a new SQL item and then create a mapping. So suppose I have a product in Big Seller, the merchant SKU is A, but in SQL, the item call is B. So if I do the auto mapping here, then system from Big Seller here will create an item named A and then map them together. So we have duplicate item in your SQL. So remember, if you already have the SQL item, in your SQL accounting, you would better to rename the merchant SQL to be the same name. Otherwise, you need to do the single mapping here, single mapping. Like this example, the SQL name, ghost pepper. So suppose in my SQL item, I don't call it ghost pepper. So I need to do single mapping. Suppose is my name. And see, in my SQL, the item is different. So I need to do single mapping one by one. Create a mapping quickly. Close it. Okay, so here I already finished the mapping, this one. So you can see here, if you are using the different item name with the merchant SKU, you need to do single mapping. So it will take some time. But if you are already using the same name, you can box select. Here you can choose 300 per page, box select, click mapping, and then they will be mapped together if they are using the same uh, same name. Merchant SKU is the same with the SKL item name. So this is what you need to pay attention. But if, if you are a new user in SQL, so in your SQL warehouse here, you will not have any item information. So you can do quick, uh, you can do the bulk mapping directly because if you click mapping the button, so Big Seller system will automatically create the item information in your SQL and also we establish the mapping directly. So I'm not sure whether I'm I'm clear to under to reply to answer your question. Yeah, if you have any confusion about the SQL name, you can keep asking here in the chat box. And one user here have the question, can we work on MacBook 
or PC only? Mm, MacBook. Because actually for the SQL here, we only support the desktop version, the PC version. You can try to install it. If you need the installation package, you can private message me after the training. You can try to install in your MacBook. I think can. Yeah, I think can. So this is the first step to do the mapping. You need to map the big seller merchant SKU with your SQL item code. Okay, if you are using different name, you need to do single mapping, but if the same, you can bulk select and then do mapping directly. So they will map together if they're in the same name, merchant SKU and SQL item. Okay, so this is the first step. If you have any question, you can ask in the chat box. It's okay, you can stop me anytime. For the next one, store mapping here. Actually in big seller here for each shop from your Shopee, Lazada and TikTok, we just call it store. Like in my big seller here, I have Shopee, Shopee PH, Shopee 100, Lazada PH and TikTok Shop Malaysia. So here we call it store, but in SQL, they will call it customer. They will call it customer. So you can imagine company is the marketplace and the customer is the shop, is the shop for each shop. So actually the second step is to authorize to map your big seller store and the store from your seller center with your SQL customer. And how to find the customer code in here? Like I want to map my Shopee PH with my SQL customer code. I can go for SQL, close it, customer, maintain customer. Here, suppose these are my shops from my online marketplace. I just need to copy this code, copy this code and paste to the second mapping, store mapping here. Paste to here and submit. And what we need to pay attention is that you can see here, even though the customer code, they are the same, our system will not have any error message because for each mapping, like store mapping, warehouse mapping, supplier mapping, our system will not identify whether you are doing the correct mapping or not. So it means that in this step, we don't have any verification mechanism. So remember, when you are doing the mapping, you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. You are doing the wrong, uh, you are doing the correct mapping. Otherwise, when you are creating a sales invoice, the sales invoice will be creating felt because the mapping is wrong. So we need to pay attention for that. For each mapping, you need to verify by yourself. Okay, so this is the second mapping for store mapping. Here, sellers and the store, and your SQL customer code. And for warehouse, next one, warehouse. Maybe some of you, you don't have any warehouse information in your SQL because you haven't created, but actually for warehouse here, it's only required for the purchase invoice creating. So if you don't need to synchronize the big seller purchase order invoice quantity to your SQL, you don't need to do warehouse mapping. But if you need this feature purchase invoice, so warehouse mapping is required. And for warehouse mapping is to map your big seller warehouse. I have a warehouse, I remember. Oh, uh, this one, my warehouse. And for the SQL warehouse name, I can go for SQL stock, maintain location here. Here maintain location is to check your warehouse information in SQL. And this is the code. Maintain location here, like KL, this is the code. I just need to copy it and map with my big seller warehouse. So when you are checking the like purchase invoice, you, when you are checking the invoice data for the purchase, you can see the warehouse information. So this is required for purchase invoice creating. And this is the third 
And next one, supplier mapping is also for this feature, purchase invoice. And maybe some of you, you don't have any supplier information in Big Seller because you haven't created before. You can go for purchase supplier list. You can create the supplier information here. And currently for the purchase order, we support ordinary supply, uh, ordinary purchase order, and also for 1688 purchase order. If some of you have the supplier in 1688, you can create a purchase order for 168 in Big Seller and also can synchronize from this website to our Big Seller here to process. And if you have the interest for 168 purchase order creating, you can raise your question in the chat box to let me know. So after the SQL introduction, I can introduce for you how to create or how to synchronize the purchase order from 168 to our Big Seller here to do the purchase receiving to stock in. Okay, so this is the supplier, supplier list. You can create here to save your supply information in Big Seller. And for the ordinary purchase order, you need to manually create it. But for the 1688 purchase order, our system will automatically synchronize the supplier information and save in here. Go back to SQL, setting, supplier mapping, add mapping. Here, choose my supply information in Big Seller in SQL supplier number. Go back to SQL, share screen, supplier, maintain supplier. Here, yeah, for some SQL old user, you will be familiar with this part, actually, because you already have this information. So the mapping for you will be quite easy. But for the new user here, Maybe this information need to be created by yourself or your account manager or your dealer. Okay. And for this one, my supplier, you can see this is the code, supplier code. Just copy it and paste to my big seller here. Copy and paste. I need to pay attention. The mapping is correct because we don't have the verification mechanism. Okay, this is the number four, supplier mapping. And for next one, fees mapping. For fees mapping here, we have two kinds of fees, sales invoice and purchase invoice. Because for sales invoice, these fees are for the orders from marketplace. Every time when you have a completed orders in Big Seller, in orders, in order itself will have shipping fee, transaction fee, discount or coupon or some other fees. So. The reason why we need to do this mapping is that when you are creating the sales invoice for your every order from the marketplace, you need to check this part of fee in your SQL sales invoice. So this is required for the sales invoice creating. And for next one, purchase invoice. If you already tried to purchase order in Big Seller, you will be familiar with these fees item like shipping fee, tax fee, first mile shipping, shipping fee, because this is the fee in here, purchase order. I can show you. Wait a second. Mm, refresh. Okay. This is our big seller purchase order. Here, purchase manage. You can create a purchase order by yourself and also 1688 purchase order. Can create and also can synchronize from the marketplace to big seller. And let me try to create one ordinary purchase order. Add purchase order. You can see here we have fees data, fees detail, ship fee, tax fee, first mile shipping fee. Because if you want to synchronize the purchase data, purchase order from big seller to your SQL. This fees information will be included as well. So we need to map this fees item with your SQL item, SQL item. And here also we have an example you can see here. This is the screenshot. But I think I need to zoom in. This is a invoice example. You can see here like this example, we have the item code for voucher, shipping fee, commission fee. So you can see here for each kind of fees, 
we will have some item code as well. Not only for your products like Merchant SKU, you will have each item code. Even for your each shipping fees item, you need to have the item code. So for some old user here, for SKR old user, you already have this item code. So what you need to do is to copy this fees item to your big seller page to finish mapping. But for some new user for SQL system, you need to create this item into your big seller maintain store item place and then copy the code to your S to your big seller here to finish the mapping. This one. If you don't need the purchase invoice, you can ignore this part. But for the sales invoice, I think this is the key feature for the SQL accounting because only when you have creating the sales invoice, then you can knock off the payment, you can declare the tax, and also you can do some financial settlement. Okay. And go back to here. You can see my SQL accounting stock, maintain stock item. Here, I already have some item information like transaction fee, shipping fee, and also I divide into shipping fee for sales invoice, and also I can create a shipping fee for purchase invoice. So I can divide it into two separate items. The reason why we need to have this item is that actually when you are creating the sales invoice here, sales invoice, when you are creating the sales invoice, you will know that here, if you want to choose the product inside, you need to choose the item, right? Like maybe suppose this product, the black, maybe a t-shirt. A black chair. Suppose I have an order and this order I sold a black chair. So I need to choose this item inside. And also besides the product, uh, the, uh, the price for the product I sold, I also need to include the shipping fee, maybe also have some transaction fee, some coupons. So I need to choose the item inside like discount. And also for some fees item, like shipping fee. So you can see here, even though for invoice, they will use the item to display each information for the product, the order volume, discount, shipping fee. So here we need to map the big seller information with this item. So when you are checking the invoice creating by big seller, we can see that this information discount is from big seller page, big seller order information, discount and shipping fee. So this is the reason why we need to do the mapping. Because previously for myself, I haven't tried SQL before. It's quite confusing for me to understand this part. But now when I check an invoice from SQL here, I know that every, every fees item, we need to have the item code as well. So we can display each fees item for a complete order. Okay. So this is the fees mapping, fees mapping. And if you need the purchase invoice, remember to separate the shipping fee and these part of fees to be separated with the sales invoice shipping fee. Okay. And the last one, payment method. The payment method mapping is required for the customer payment, customer payment. Because for the customer payment here, we have a step you can confirm the payment reconciliation payment reconciliation from the marketplace. You can confirm whether the payment from the marketplace already finished or not. So we can also check the payment method as well by which bank account, by which channel. So this payment method is for the customer payment. Here, let me try add one payment method. What we need to fill in is the account description and ID information and where you can find it. Actually, you can go for your SQL. Share. Yeah. Cancel. Here, GL. Maintain account. This place, you can maintain your account, like bank account. For each marketplace, maybe they are using different bank account to payment, to finish the payment for you, the marketplace. 
they will charge you maybe by different payment method. So you need to copy the payment method, the different code to your big seller. And here, let me open this one, Maybank. We have description and a GL code. Description copy to here. And ID is the GL code. Copy it. So here is the payment method for my testing company. And remember, all the payment methods in your SQL account, you need to do the mapping. Like here, I also have CMB, UOB, this bank account. So I need to copy all the information and finish the mapping with my big seller. So when I am creating a customer payment, I can choose this payment method for me to check. Okay. This is the payment method. And remember, all the payment methods need to be mapped with your big seller here, this page. Okay, so here are all the mapping. And in a word, for sales invoice, mapping SKU, store mapping, fees mapping is required. And for a customer payment, mapping SKU, store mapping, and for fees mapping, payment mapping is required. But for the purchase invoice here, mapping SKU, store mapping, warehouse, supplier, fees mapping, they are required. Okay, so in a word, if you want to realize, if you want to try all the features for sales invoice, payment math, customer payment, and purchase invoice, you need to establish all the mapping. Okay, and for other setting, the setting here is for the sales invoice number. Our first version, our sales invoice number are generated from big seller. And some of the seller report, the SQL sales invoice will use the order number directly. So now we just uh, enable two options here because some seller, they still want to use the invoice number from big seller. So maybe for my other order from offline shop or some other channel, I want to use the order number to record it. And the invoice created in big seller, I want to use the big seller invoice number. So I want to separate it. So, so for this kind of seller, they will choose the first option. But most of the seller, they want to use the invoice number just like SQL or the number. So they will choose the second option. Okay, so this is the sales invoice number. And after you already finish all the mapping, then you can start creating the sales invoice. And remember, only when you have a completed orders, then you can create a sales invoice. And in here, because I don't have a real order from Shopee, Lazada, TikTok, I cannot show you this example. But actually for yourself, after you already finished one mapping, you can try to create one sales invoice here, one sales invoice. And after you already create a sales invoice, this order data will be pushed to here, create successfully. And you can also click into action here, click into detail to check the invoice information. Invoice information. If any here, anytime you face the problem like create failed, you can check the error message first. But the common reason would be the mapping, the mapping problem. If you already adjust the mapping, you can try to create again, create a sales invoice again, then will be created successfully. And here we also have an option, move to create successfully. Here, this one is for some seller, maybe for some specific order, I don't need to create a sales invoice. I don't need to do the tax settlement. So I can click this button, move to create successfully. So this order will be moved to here directly, but need to pay attention if you click this button. So this order will not have the sales invoice in big seller. You cannot check the sales invoice. If in the future you want to create back the sales invoice, you need to go for SQL to manually create it. Okay, so need to pay attention for this one. Move to create successful, so you cannot see the sales invoice in Big Seller. Okay, so this is the first one, sales invoice. And after you already created the sales invoice, maybe at the end of the month, you want to create a customer payment, maybe you want to reconciliation, reconciliate the payment from the marketplace, whether it's correct, whether there is unpaid amount, you can create a customer payment in Big Seller. And according to some users, 
feedback, they will create a customer payment maybe at the end of the month, maybe for each season or annual, they will create a customer payment. And for here, to create a customer payment, I need to choose company name, store, and this number, this number is from SQL. If it's empty, it will be automatically generated. So actually you can ignore this part, just like a serial number for the customer payment. And for the payment method, we need to choose it from which bank account for this shop here, which bank account we use it for the marketplace charges. And then here we need to select the sales invoice that created in Big Seller. And once we already select them, we can click save and push. And then this customer payment will be moved to here, push successfully. So the customer payment will be successfully created. You can check on Big Seller and also can check in the SQL accounting system. And need to pay attention is that here we have total invoice value, total settlement amount, and total unpaid amount. And this part, total invoice value, are the total value that you already selected from the sales invoice in here. You already selected. And for this part, total settlement amount, we integrate this part with the feature in here, payment reconciliation. Because in the payment reconciliation, we can check the release amount from the marketplace. So every time we're not sure whether the marketplace already uh, already, already released the payment or not, or whether the payment is correct or not, whether there is unpaid fees item, you can check release here. And we have platform release amount. We just use this part of data to be in here. total settlement amount. And by checking the total invoice value and the settlement amount, we will calculate whether there is unpaid amount. So by checking unpaid amount, you can know whether the marketplace already, already charged the full amount for these orders, for these complete orders. And what we need to pay attention is this part, unpaid amount. If not, maybe we can go for seller sender to go to find uh, to check with the marketplace again for the unpaid amount. So actually this step is for us to to you to use the customer payment to knock off the payment to do the payment reconciliation to make sure all the orders the marketplace already charge. So sales invoice and the customer payment actually they are linked together. After you create a sales invoice then you can create the customer payment. And for the last one, actually it's a new feature in our big seller, purchase invoice, purchase invoice. Because some of the seller previously, we don't have this feature, but they will use the SQL accounting to manage the stock because they want to do some financial settlement. Maybe they need to calculate the cost, purchase or some other payment for their accountant in the company. So they will need to use the SQL item, the quantity to calculate some data. But previously we don't have this feature, so they need to go for a big seller to manage the push inventory. So I can push inventory from big seller warehouse to online shop. And also every time I have purchased, I still need to go for SQL to do purchase invoice and then stock in. But now we already have this feature. So it means that in the future, you don't need to go for SQL to create a purchase order, do receiving, and then to create a sales invoice again. You can create the purchase order in Big Seller and then do the purchase receiving in Big Seller. After the purchase already finished, completed, so you can create a purchase invoice. This invoice will be synchronized to your SQL and the inventory of your item, the stock of your item will be added in your SQL. And also for every purchase invoice will be displayed in your SQL this way. Purchase here, purchase invoice will be synchronized here so you can check in your SQL system. 
So actually this two step, purchase order, goods receive, you can now do on Bigseller only. And you can also create a purchase invoice in Bigseller. Then this invoice will be pushed to here and save in here. And let's go back to base seller because this part purchase invoice is also associated with the purchase. So I will also introduce how to create a purchase order in big seller. We can go for draft at purchase order. Here in the purchase order in big seller, we need to choose receiving warehouse. Suppose my warehouse. Okay. I need to purchase to my warehouse. Supplier, one one, and check-in number estimated arrival time is not required. You can fill in according to your actual situation. And for some other fees data, the details, because for some seller they will use the this part of fees allocation to calculate to recalculate the unit price, the cost of their merchant SKU, like. For this purchase, I need to pay 100 Malaysia ringgit for each product. And the allocation method I choose by quantity, suppose in this way, okay? And then in this purchase, I buy, suppose this two, confirm. And for each of the product, I purchase 100 pieces. And the unit price here, you can see, I can choose to input it. If I already input the unit price, so for the big seller, merchant SKU's cost will be recalculated according to the unit price and also for the fees allocation way. You can see here, suppose for this, this one, this product, I when I purchase, I need to pay 10 Malaysia ringgit for each. And then the system will calculate the value for the total purchase. And this one is what we need to pay attention. Single allocated expense. You can see here, for the shipping fee, I need to pay 100 for these two products. And allocated by quantity, so it means that for here, each of the product, I need to allocate 0 0.5 Malaysia ringgit for each of the product, each piece. And the total stock in cost price would be the unit price plus the shipping fee allocation expense. But if you, if you don't have any fees allocation, like the shipping fee, I don't need to pay for that. And the shipping fee, I don't need to include it into my cost of the merchant SKU. So you can ignore this part. Just input the unit price, unit price and then need to click save. Okay, so I already created a purchase order in Big Seller. And after I create it, I need to click submit. So it means that this purchase, order, this purchase order is confirmed, submit. Successful, so we'll be moved to on the way. When this purchase order is on the way here, we can print the purchase order and send it to our supplier. So the supplier can check the product details, quantity, and also for the price and shipping fee, some other data. They can do confirm. And once you receive the package from your supplier, you can do purchase receiving. Purchase receiving. Here, purchase quantity. Suppose I finish all the receiving. I receive 100 pieces for each. Then click save. Confirm. Successful. So this purchase order already finished the receiving and it's a completed receiving status. So I can check it here, completed. This one, this is the purchase order I created just now. So this purchase order moved from draft on the way and then to completed. So means finish. You can see here, all receiving. And for this purchase order, I can then see in my SQL account. Purchase invoice. This is the order I created just now. I can copy this one, the purchase order number, search in here. This is the purchase invoice. 
I can create, I can create. And actually this is the order I created just now and I already finished the purchase receiving. So now I can create an invoice, create it and choose the company name confirm. But here will be push filed because um, for the invoice number, purchase order is empty and I haven't finished the SQ mapping. And this SQL invoice number, this invoice number is actually from your supplier. So it would be better if you already have, you need to fill in and then create again. But because for my mapping, I, have, I haven't I have finished the mapping. So we'll felt. So remember before you create each payment slip or each sheet here, you need to finish the mapping. And after you already created, we'll be moved to create a successful. So for the quantity in this purchase order, will be automatically add in for my SQL item. So suppose I have these two items in my SQL, we will, manual add, will automatically add 100 pieces, 100 pieces. This is the purchase invoice. You can check in here, purchase, purchase invoice. And for the quantity stock, you can check in here, stock, maintain stock item. The quantity will be automatically added because you already have the purchase invoice and finish the purchase receiving. But actually, uh, according to some users' feedback, you need to do you need to do the supplier payment after you already finish the purchase invoice. And currently we don't have this feature. And we also want to hear from our user whether the supplier payment is needed for your business. Because once you already finished the supplier payment in GL here, you can do the trial balance, trial balance. So here would be a balance if you already finished the supplier payment, the creating. So we also want to know if the supplier payment is required. If yes, you can type one in the chat box to let me, to let me know. And here we have a question. Purchase order section can do a feature to bring multiple order together and let warehouse do stock count before admin update. Mm. You mean before you do purchase receiving, right? Before you do purchase receiving, you want to do a stock count, right? I see. Go for a big seller. You can do stock count in here. Inventory, stock count. Add count task. And here you can count by warehouse. So all the merchant SKU can be create can be select in. Uh, let me choose like this one. Generate task. Start counting. And then here we'll show the SKU in your warehouse, all of the SKU. You can print the count list, count list. And you can take this count list to your warehouse to count the exact data. And note down here, then go back to your big seller. You can manually input one by one or use Excel file to import the counting data. And remember to click finish date, finish counting. So you can count your warehouse before you do purchase receiving in this way can print the count list. So I'm not sure whether this one can satisfy your need. You can feedback me here in the chat box. Inventory, stock count. When Shopee ships the product, will Big Seller automatically place an invoice and link to software or need manually create a sales invoice? Mm. When there is a completed orders, in report SQL account here, the order will be automatically sent to here. What you need to do, just need to check it and then create sales invoice. Then will be created successfully. Actually, you don't need to manually create, just need to click this button, create, and then will be successfully. If you already finished all the mapping. Yeah, for completed orders. Remember, need to wait for the order is completed. Warehouse guy need to count each incoming purchase order before admin update the exact stock to the system. So you mean to count the stock of the purchase purchase order package? 
You mean the purchase order package, right? I see. Yeah, in here, purchase on the way. You can print here, select them, print. So it will be printed. This one. Can this satisfy your need? This one. Purchase order. You can print it. And also you can try to export if you want to see it by Excel file. And print one supplier per paper. We'll have a lot of blank space in the paper. How about this one? If you export by Excel file, this one, Excel file, but no image, only the SKU name and the product title. Can this satisfy your need? Excel file. Yeah, you can see whether Excel file work around for it. Okay. Yeah, you can export the purchase order. Here, export for all. So they will be combined for all the purchase order here. Any other question for this part? Okay, so for the SQL purchase invoice, this is a flow to create a purchase invoice. You need to finish the purchase order. When this purchase order is completed, already finished the receiving, so you can create a purchase invoice. And once the purchase invoice finished creating, will be synchronized to your SQL. But currently we are planning to optimize for this feature. Supplier payment. So once you finish the supplier payment creating, you can do the trial balance. And also for the user here in our meeting right now, may I know is the supplier payment required? Are you familiar with this part? Supplier payment. Is supplier payment required for the purchase in SQL? If you want to do the balance. Supplier payment. If some of you have any maybe experience about SQL using before, like supplier payment, you can let me know. So this part, is this required? And so this, this is our introduction today about this feature. And if you want to know more about some other features, maybe you have interest like all the processing, push inventory, you can raise your question in the chat box and I can help you in another training for this one. And if you have any question about the SQL or any advice, you can let me know in the chat box as well. For the purchase, for the supplier payment, supplier payment, we are trying to do a research whether is it this is required for our user here. So if you know that, please give me a feedback in the chat box. Thank you. The supplier payment. Don't use the supplier payment. 
But if you don't use the supplier payment, how to do the balance in SQL? Because we are, our tech team recently, we are uh, discussing about the supplier payment, this feature, whether it's required for the user, they need to do purchase in SQL. Let's see. And here I will leave my WhatsApp number in the chat box. If you have any question after this meeting, maybe about SQL or some other features, you can let me know. And we hope to hear from our user about the SQL integration in the future. And this is my WhatsApp number. Yeah, you can add my WhatsApp contact. So we can discuss after this meeting. What's that? Okay, so this is our training today and we will be ended after five minutes. Five minutes. If you have any question, you can raise your question in the chat box again. Thank you for attending.